August 1st, 2020. And it's time to uh, have a summer visit with Jim's Fish Room. The corner tank being where we will start. And give you a quick update. Not much new, but uh, it certainly does add a very attractive decoration to our living room and we both very much enjoy watching the life and especially the plantings. I mean these are gardens that you see here and uh, they do very well. It's funny when you go back and look at the videos over the years uh, it comes and goes. Well with the CO2 and that fertilizer feeding on a quarterly basis or weekly basis rather uh, the garden has maintained itself now for a couple of years and so we're very pleased with all that and uh, glad to share it with you. Well there, here it is August 1st. Where is the summer going? What a strange year between the pandemic, confinement, uh, just so many things going on. Uh, I have to confess it's been a while since I did a video. <clears throat> Had a uh, knee replacement back in June and uh, that set me back a little bit, sitting back and uh, just didn't have the motivation. And so the tanks have not been kept up as well as they should, but just looking at them, they look like a lush garden. I thought I'd share a little bit with you. And so while there's nothing exceptionally new, uh, you do see that Amazon sword plant in the back. That one is the one we moved over from the boat tank, if you recall. And it is doing very well, needless to say. Um, and you know it's funny I've always been pleased with the Amazons and sometime recently I heard somebody complain about how big they get and uh, then I've been looking and I said you know they are awful big unless you've got a really big tank and then we have the Kabamba which has not been doing well in this particular corner tank but with some cuttings from the boat tank I'm sorry yeah the boat tank uh, we've got a little bit of a garden here and it really does look very attractive between the red kabamba and the green kabamba. And if I get lax in terms of feeding the fish every single day, they start pecking apart the plant. And so you get some areas of it that are bare of the usual, uh, well, you can't call them leaves, can you? Whatever. The fish seem to be doing okay. Every once in a while I see a dead fish in there that the fish are cleaning up and I have a hard time figuring out what kind of fish it was even. So, that, But that's summertime. It's tough. Did have to treat some of those neons. We had uh, quite a few in here if you recall and we got some of the, that white growth on them and so the other day I had to take a couple of them out and just uh, like with Nemo release them to the wild through the toilet. And so we've got I think eight left at this point. But the ones in the uh, boat tank, as you'll see in a minute, are doing very well, and they don't have it. And so I'm just uh, slowly dealing with it. The one black angel died. Shame, he was a beautiful fish. And the other one was getting picked on by the two angels up here in the corner. And so I finally, uh, th and this is obviously a couple. They laid eggs back some time ago. I may have caught that in the video or not. And so they, uh, we're picking on him and I finally said, you know what, let's just move him over to the bow tank and so you'll see him over there. The uh, a couple of the sword tails we took out of here and put them out in the outdoor pond. And uh, <laughs> the problem with the pond is it's not as clear as a fish tank where you can see into it. And uh, from the time we put them out there, we haven't seen the, the pair that I wanted to see how they make out in the summertime. And so I don't know if they're hidden because there's a lot of structure in that half barrel pond and a lot of plant growth. And so they may be in there, but they don't come up for feeding like the guppies do. So I have no idea how they're going to make out there. And uh, let's see, what else is there to say about this? Uh, the crypts are doing well, as you can see down in front there. That rich, dark, purplish leaves. And a couple of them are doing very well. The um, plant that I was so proud of, which is the Madagascar lace plant, 
is still in here, but it, it's not as predominant as it was before. And so you have to look for it. And the leaves are still on the narrow side as opposed to the broad leaves that we had early on. I don't know what that's about. Another strange behavior I notice here is the loaches chase the other fish and boy they are swimmers and they'll get caught up and there's one of the loaches right up here. I don't know if he'll do it or not. Uh, the sharks are also a type of loach but you'll see what this one does. He gets up by the mouth of one of the other like a red tailed shark and just chases him. I don't think he's biting him but he's, he's really very strange. And so I don't know if they're teasing him or uh, the other uh, fish they're chasing or, or exactly what's driving that. However, it is what it is and nobody seems to be the, being damaged by it, so not much I can do about it. I'm going to keep this really short. Like I said, there's, we haven't been out to uh, buy anything or to... There, he's doing it in the center. Watch. See what I'm talking about? And then it'll just drop off. And it doesn't with any of the fish at all, but uh, especially the uh, red tail sharks and the tricolored sharks. So anyway, that's what's going on there. Let's move to the other side of the room. Okay, back over to the bow tank, the original one. And uh, it's overgrown, and I really need to do some work with it. Uh, the Valisneria are just overtaking as grass I guess does. Behind it there's a beautiful uh, plant that we moved and I thought we were going to lose it in the moving but as it turned out it's thriving pretty well. I'll try and capture that in a minute. Meanwhile over in the corner here we have uh, that kabamba just going to town and that's where we're getting the cuttings both for the pond and for the corner tank over here. Those uh, what are we could Denison barbs are doing rather well and they are sort of hanging out together these days which is interesting. See some cherry barbs there. Uh, the, that, there's that black angel that I moved over and he's joined by a couple other young angels that we've had here for a while and one of those did die but we, the other two seem to be doing rather well. Uh, there's a nice school of neons over here that are healthy, not developing some of the problems. And of course we have uh, a lot of young black mollies, liar tail black mollies. They're very nice shape to them, uh, but they're not growing up really big. That one's swimming kind of strange, I don't know why. But, uh, and we have that male sword tail, the female finally passed away and they never did produce any young. Beautiful pair of fish, but just didn't make it in terms of populating others. And so uh, the red tail sharks are doing well here. You can see the tricolored shark right there in the forefront. Uh, a bunch of platties, and like I said, the cherry barbs that uh, they, they're doing rather well. I'm pleased with them. So that's what's going on here in the living room. But let's see if I have enough battery power to take you outside and get a shot of the pond. Uh, the office tank, not worth showing really. I took a whole bunch of plants that were floating up there just blocking the light. Uh, and it's got a huge Amazon sword in there that's taken over the whole tank and not much to see there. Uh, we did finally lose the male of that beautiful pair of liar tail black mollies. And I would love to find, um, uh, what do we call them, the high fin uh, black mollies with the orange fin on the top. But uh, I'm not doing it online. I, I want to see what I'm buying before I order it or, or buy it. And so I'm a local store fan, but it's a distance. And uh, you know what? After a while of not going out, you get used to not going out. And so even though it's a a distance to go across the river from here in New Jersey over to Pennsylvania. Uh, we haven't done it in a while, but that'll be coming up. We're going to get some traveling going over there sometime soon. So let me see what kind of battery power we have here and see if I can get a short shot at least of the pond outside.
Sorry about the air conditioning noise in the background, but I just wanted to show you that plant that's doing so well. And I swear when we moved it, we lost all its leaves. I thought, oh well. But now it is uh, the full width of this tank. And we don't dare move it again, but it's doing very well. There's one of the, that's the biggest of the black mollies that have come from that one couple we had. We did lose the male of that liar tail black molly. The bettas seem to be doing just fine. Uh, if I go and give them a little bit of food, we may get to see a shot of them up close. Uh, beautiful finish still. Bright red one dark red one rather, on the right hand side, and on the left hand side we have that variation of color that's so attractive. You see the blue into the red, and then you have the bright red over here. He's gorgeous. Look at the fins. Of course they have nobody nipping at their fins, so they're both doing just fine up here. Uh, I did once in a while move them over into one of the big tanks just to give them some space to go swimming in temporarily. Didn't know if that was spoiling them or giving them a treat. Just don't know. But anyway, they both do very well. And uh, as soon as you come in with food, boy, they're right up there. Okay, we're out in the summer garden. Pam does such a beautiful job, huh? She's even rescued an old ice cream maker from many years ago into a garden element. And as you pan up, you get to see what a beautiful garden she maintains. And in the middle of that garden, we have our pond, as we call it. And this is really her project. It originally was a Father's Day gift for me, but I'm telling you, this is her doing, and she does a beautiful job with it. So here we go, and she's done a great job of planting around it. And we have that solar panel solar-powered um, fountain and you won't see any fish because there's just too many places for them to hide but I did move some of the plantings from the indoor planting growth out here giving the fish more place to hide and it's really working out very well so it's been a good summer so far for that and as a result you see the flowers around it are just gorgeous and even to the butterfly bush right here in the background that attracts beautiful butterflies. And the clementis on the fence behind it, of course. And so that's our pond. Not a big deal, but always fun in the fall when you recover, harvest whatever's in there. And uh, it's always a surprise.